This is my custom-made smart servo driver. By replacing the driver of an RC servo like the SG90, you can easily and inexpensively upgrade it to a smart servo. So, what can it do? Typically, RC servos perform only simple proportional control. But with an STM32 microcontroller, we've added PID control and low-pass filtering to achieve smooth, vibration-free movement. Moreover, it supports I2C communication, allowing you to read the current angle, speed, output, and more from the servo motor using a Raspberry Pi or Arduino. You can also set the maximum torque and adjust the gains of the low-pass filter and PID controller. In this video, I'll be revealing everything from the circuit diagram to reflow soldering and operational testing. First, let's briefly touch upon the original, unmodified SG90. The SG90 servo is controlled by sending a PWM signal. The capacitor on the servo driver charges during the on period of the PWM signal. Therefore, a PWM signal with a longer on time results in a higher voltage on the capacitor, which becomes the target voltage. Another important voltage comes from the potentiometer, which provides a divided voltage corresponding to the servo's angle. The motor rotates the potentiometer to minimize the difference between these two voltages. That's how the SG90 works. It's very simple. Let's take a look at the circuit for upgrading the SG90. The key components are these four ICs. First, we have the LP2992 voltage regulator, which steps down the voltage from 5V to 3.3V. The motor operates at 5V, but since the STM32 runs at 3.3V, we need this regulator. Next is the STM32 microcontroller. It's very small, but functions like an Arduino. It can blink LEDs, output PWM signals, perform I2C communication, and more. It's the brain of this smart servo driver. Then we have the TL431 shunt regulator, which generates a stable voltage. This IC is quite interesting. By connecting two of its three pins to a resistor, it produces a voltage of approximately 2.495V at this point. It's similar to a voltage regulator in that it generates a specific voltage, but it has much higher precision compared to typical regulators. It's also resistant to heat, maintaining 2.495V regardless of the PCB's heat generation. However, its output current is low, so it's not suitable as a power supply. We use this IC as the reference voltage for the potentiometer. Since the potentiometer works through simple voltage division, the stability of this reference voltage is crucial. That's why the TL431 is a perfect fit. The last IC is the motor driver. It's small but functions the same as any standard motor driver. It amplifies the PWM signal from the STM32 and converts it into a current strong enough to drive the motor. These are the ICs necessary to convert an RC servo into a smart servo. The rest of the numerous capacitors are used to cut noise in the circuit. Additionally, we have some components here to supply power from a USB Type-C connector, which is a simple setup involving just two resistors. These are just connectors. That's the overall structure of the smart servo driver. If you want to control multiple SG90 servos, you simply line up as many of these as you need. However, if you want to supply power via USB Type-C, Note that depending on the number of SG90S, you may need to add an additional circuit like this. Now that we've covered the circuit diagram, let's move on to the PCB design. There are two main points we focused on this time. First, I tried to avoid routing traces on the back side of the PCB as much as possible. This allows us to create a large ground plane, making the circuit more resistant to noise. Second, I place traces that are prone to noise and those that require stable voltage far apart. The traces that deliver current to the motor have large fluctuations in current, which can electrically influence their surroundings. Therefore, placing critical traces like the reference voltage for the potentiometer near them would degrade the servo's accuracy. With the PCB design complete, it's time to place an order. I'll be ordering from JLCPCB, the sponsor of this project. JLCPCB is the perfect place to order your PCBs. They offer one-stop services, including PCB manufacturing, PCB assembly, and component sourcing. With an impressive turnaround time as fast as 24 hours, 
JLCPSB is the first choice for time-constrained projects. With over 5 million global users, JLCPSB is trusted by engineers and hobbyists for their high-quality and reliable PCBs. By watching this video and becoming a new user of JLCPSB, you can receive coupons worth up to 60 US dollars. And as a bonus, if you're watching this between November 25th and December 15th, 2024, you're in luck. JLCPCB is hosting their Black Friday sale during this time. You can snag coupons worth up to 252 US dollars. Don't miss out on this incredible opportunity. Check out what JLCPCB can do for you at the link below. The PCB arrived just five days after I placed the order. Now let's go ahead and attach the ICs. I'll apply solder paste and place the components on top. Once all the parts are in place, I'll put it on a hot plate to melt the solder. And there I have it. The PCB is complete. Next, I'll write the servo drive program into the STM32. In the main loop, the process to move the servo to the target angle is continuously executed at 200 Hz. We read the analog value from the potentiometer and apply a low-pass filter to cut out noise. Next, we convert the analog value to a mechanical angle using this formula. This gives us the current angle of the servo. Then, using the servo's current angle and the target angle, we calculate the error, the derivative of the error, and the integral of the error. With this, we can compute the output using PID control with this formula. Next, if necessary, we apply a low-pass filter to the output to reduce noise. We then limit the calculated output so that it doesn't exceed the maximum output. Since torque is proportional to current, this means we can limit the servo's maximum torque. Finally, if the motor output variable is enabled, we send a PWM signal with a duty cycle corresponding to the output to the motor driver IC. The motor driver amplifies the PWM signal, causing the motor to rotate the gears and reduce the error. Then, the potentiometer reads the angle again, and the process repeats. This is the main loop and the basic algorithm of the servo system. Additionally, we set up the microcontroller to monitor I2C communication via interrupts. Based on requests from the master device, we can set the target angle, adjust PID and low-pass filter gains, set the maximum output, or send back status information like current angle, speed, and output. That's the processing happening inside the smart servo driver. For more details, please download the program from the link in the description. The program is complete, so I'm going to write it to the STM32. Now let's actually see it in action. Before moving the servo, we send the servo's gains and the calibrated correspondence between the ADC values and mechanical angles via I2C and enable the motor output. After that, when we send the target angle to the motor, it moves to that position. By specifying the target angle continuously at very short intervals, we can also perform speed control. Furthermore, it's possible for the servo to send information back to the master device, allowing us to use the servo like a sensor. This makes tasks like robot teaching possible. Additionally, with this driver that supports USB PD, we can control three motors simultaneously. The custom smart servo driver has been successfully tested and is working perfectly. Now, I need to correct an explanation from a previous video. In that video, I explained the reason why vibration occurs when performing speed control by frequently updating the target angle on an unmodified SG90 as follows. Because the SG90 only performs proportional control, you have to reduce the P gain to suppress vibration. Therefore, when the difference between the target angle and the current angle is small, the motor doesn't rotate, and only starts moving suddenly when the error becomes significant. I explained that this is the cause of the vibration that occurs when you try to perform slow movements or speed control with the SG90. However, after watching another video, it seems that the real cause of the vibration is the low precision of the software PWM on the Raspberry Pi. The Raspberry Pi has two sets of hardware PWM channels that offer higher precision than the software PWM. By using hardware PWM, it appears you can control the SG90 without vibration, even with just proportional control.
So, although I misunderstood the cause of the SG90's vibration, the value of this smart servo driver remains unchanged. Incidentally, the STM32 used in the driver supports hardware PWM, so it can generate PWM signals without being affected by the CPU load or interrupt processing. So, what did you think? In this video, I introduced how to upgrade an SG90 servo to a smart servo using a custom-made smart servo driver. Please also check out the video where I take on a block stacking task using the smart servo driver introduced here and stereo camera measurements. If you like my projects, please consider joining my membership. As a member, you'll receive short videos every two weeks showcasing the latest progress on my ongoing robot projects. Right now, I'm developing an internal cycloidal actuator system for a quadruped robot. I'll be covering key topics in robotics like ESCs, brushless motors, and cycloidal reducers. Your support truly encourages me. All the manufacturing files and programs for the smart servo driver introduced in this video are available for download from the GitHub link in the description below, so please check them out. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. Thank you so much for watching till the end, and I'll see you in the next video.